My name is Mary Lavelle, and I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to worship with us. May the Lord richly bless you as we open His Word together and um, worship. Amen. Welcome to church from the Wilson kids. Well, almost all of them are missing one. We love you and miss you all. Hello, church. Welcome to church on video. This is Fred and Linda Fowler. Welcome aboard. I'm standing today and that is for a purpose let's just address the elephant in the room I don't know about you but I've talked to a lot of people who have said man this church on the TV screen thing I just can't get used to it and we're all sitting in our living room and we feel kind of awkward and we're not really sure and we don't have you know the whole congregation around us singing and so it just feels kind of weird to sing out and I just want to invite you today right now to get on up off the couch get on up out of the chair to stand with me and to worship in whatever way your heart desires. And if we can't raise our voices and raise our hands in our very own homes, then where will we? If your heart's desire is to kneel down on the ground, what better place than your living room? If your heart's desire is to lay out before the Lord, what better time than now? This next song we began learning together a couple of weeks ago, and this song is called, Is He Worthy? And remember, um, it's a call and response type of song, so I invite you to sing the call and then the response, or to just listen, let it wash over you, and sing the response as we go. Here we go. Do you feel the world is broken? We 
shadows deepen we do do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through we do do you wish that you could see it all truly love us he does does the spirit move among us he does and is Jesus our Messiah hold forever those he loves he does does our God intend to dwell again Surrender our entire selves to God. Speak to us in a way we have never heard you before. Pour out your spirit in a way we have never seen before. Sing it. Yeah. 
Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Mac. I'm the youth pastor at the Tenasket Free Methodist Church. And I want to welcome you uh, to the Tenasket Free Methodist Church. Uh, kids, you know every week we like to pause um, and do something for you. So this week we want to welcome you to, to, kids, <laughs> to kids Church. Kids church. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, welcome. Hey, Pastor Ryan's going to talk about a story. Um, and so I'm going to do two things. I'm going to tell you a story but I also want to give you a gardening lesson. That's kind of weird, right? Well, it's springtime. We like to be outside and everyone's been planting. I'm guessing most of you have probably planted something, but we have a couple flowers that, uh, that we are going to plant and these guys are going to help me. Okay? Come on. So Pastor Ryan is going to talk about a parable. A parable is a story. Come over here. Uh, it's a story uh, that you use to explain something. Right? You tell a story and it helps you understand something. Maverick, you want to stand over here so they can see what we're doing? Uh, now this story uh, is, is about uh, a man that went on this road and he was he picked this dangerous road because he wanted to get somewhere quicker. Even though he knew it was dangerous. When he went on this road, there's a couple of people that stopped and robbed him. They stopped him and robbed him and took all of his stuff and they beat him all up. They said he was half dead. That means you're not doing too well. <laughs> that sound good or bad? Yeah. That's not good. So they leave him half dead and he's laying there. And these two men walk by. One walks by, he walks by and he sees this man and he just like goes, I'm not dealing with him. That guy's probably not wearing much. He's beat up and bloody. That seems like it's really messy and I don't want to deal with him. And he keeps walking by. And the next guy comes by and he does the exact same thing. He walks by and there's this guy on the side of the road who got beat up, he's got nothing. That seems like a, like a big mess to deal with. I'm gonna walk right by it. This last guy walks by on this road and he's called the Samaritan. That's actually the name of the parable. The story that Jesus tells is called the Good Samaritan. See, he walks by and what he does is he sees this guy laying in the ditch, beat up, but he has nothing. He realizes he's not doing too well and he goes, you know what? I'm gonna take care of him because my heart hurts for him. I'm gonna show love to this man. So what he does is he goes and he, he fixes him up and he, he cleans him up, gives him clothes, takes him to an inn and pays for the man to stay there so he can recover. He does something that the other two wouldn't. He showed compassion for him. That means he cared for this man. But here's the cool thing. 
by doing this, he he's doing what Jesus is telling us we should do. The two, the first two guys that went, do you know who they were? They were both pastors. They're called, it, one of them was called a Levite. It's a person that works in a church, kind of like I do. It'd be like me walking by a man who was beat up and I totally leave him, leaving it just sitting there on the side of the road. So while we're talking about that story, I want you guys to join me. We're gonna plant a couple of these flowers. Uh, we picked out a couple of spots. Finn, will you hand me that shovel? Now, I don't know if you guys have ever planted a flower before, but it's really not very hard. Pick this spot out. We're hoping it will fill this area in. Maverick, you wanna take care of the watering? When you plant a flower, you gotta kinda mess with the roots a little bit, tear the bottom off, otherwise they'll be root bound. And this one's not very deep. We're gonna plant right here. Does that look like a good spot, guys? Yeah. yeah. Should have dug this hole already. It'd have been easier. Okay. There's our spot. Now, the way you know you go deep enough is if the dirt goes all the way up and matches right where it is now. Check. Is that deeper? Is that good or too deep? It's too deep. That's too deep. Add a little bit of dirt. Yeah. There we go. How about that? That's good. Okay, That's good. you guys help me pack this dirt in around it. Break this dirt up. You want to be careful when you're holding your flower. You don't want to squish it, otherwise it won't make it. Pack this dirt in around. That's, oh, that's a rock. We want that out of there. How's that? Does that look good? Yeah. Okay, there we planted a flower. Hey, I want to plant one more. Will you guys help me? Yep. Okay, we got one more spot over here. Maverick, will you get the flower out for me? Now guys, when you're picking spots, you want to make sure you have the right flower for the right spot. Which means you're going to have to read and go, does it need sun, does it need shade? You're going to have to put a little bit of work into it before you plant the flower. We know these spots are going to work pretty well for the flowers we picked out. Okay. There we go. Okay, where's my flower? Okay, Finn, you wanna do what I did and pinch off the bottom and get the roots ready? Yep. Are we planting this? No, we're not planting that one. That one's gonna go somewhere else. Pinch off the bottom. A little bit more, you wanna pinch the whole bottom off. Just like that, get rid of all those roots. Okay, now that we've done our gardening lesson, <laughs> let's talk about this. So was this, I mean, this wasn't very hard, right? It took a little bit of work. Hey, that spot I dug up had a worm in it. Every boy on here is probably going, give me the worm. Yep, yeah, Maverick says, can I have it? <laughs> so we plant this in here. Let's go ahead and make sure it's standing up right. There we go. So we took time. We planted these two flowers. Right? They're going to be beautiful flowers. Hopefully they'll grow and they'll fill in this area. They're called impatience, if any of you like these. Now you're supposed to get pretty tall too. So they're gonna grow and they're gonna get real big. But you know what? It wasn't very hard. We had to work at it. But look, I got all messy. Now just like that story I was talking about with the, the parable of the Good Samaritan, it would have been easy to go, nah, these spots are empty, there's nothing there. It looks messy for me to deal with it. And we could have passed right by and just left it just like this. It would have, it would have done, I would have gotten nothing from it, but it also wouldn't cause me any trouble. But like the Good Samaritan, if we put a little bit of work in, it's gonna cause us to get messy. We can, uh, we can put this, these flowers in, we can love people like Jesus is telling us to, and there will be something great that grows from it. Here's the interesting thing. That Samaritan didn't know that man at all. He didn't know him. He was a stranger. But that same kind of love needs to be done with our, our mom and our dad and our brothers and sisters and our grandparents. It's not just strangers. It almost seems like it might be easier to help a stranger than our parents who are always yelling at us because we keep doing the same thing or our brother who keeps irritating us because he's wearing my clothes. You can fill in the blank. But here's the thing. If we're gonna love like Jesus wants us to, it's gonna cause us to get messy. Hey, thanks for joining in. 
I want you guys to really in, listen to Pastor Ryan this morning as he preaches on what it means to love the way Jesus wants us to. Can you guys say bye? Bye. Bye. Good morning, friends. It is so good to be in your home this morning. You know, some of you I know are interested in where we are uh, uh, speaking from every Sunday, and some of you know this location. But as you can see, there's uh, a lot of commotion and traffic and uh, loud noises around me. And I don't even know if you can hear me right now, but that's life. And that's exactly what life is like right now with so many different voices and noises around us that we just have to sort through and submit to Jesus. You know, my prayer every Sunday and actually every day of the week, I want you to know that I'm praying for you, has been based out of Colossians chapter 2, verse 7, where I pray for you, the church, that you would be rooted in Christ, strengthened in the faith, overflowing with thankfulness. And what an important time in our uh, world today where we are rooted in Christ and strengthened in the faith. You know, these past two Sundays, I've told you that we are in a new sermon series called Rooted. And one of the constant themes through that has been, you can't be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature at the same time. One of my friends this week uh, told me of a story of a friend who traveled to Asia and he was at a market and he picked up a piece of blown glass that was a beautiful uh, piece of art. But his friend said, hey, don't buy that. Do not buy that, it'll be a waste of money. And the friend said, well, why? It looks beautiful to me. He said, yes, but hold it up to the light. Because once you hold it up to the light, it, it will reveal all of the cracks in it because that blown glass has been pieced together. And you know, I wonder uh, during this time that we are in, I wonder if Jesus would ask us, well, I know he does, ask us to hold up our lives to him and to say, Jesus, would you reveal any area in my life where I am just emotionally immature, where I am just stuck in some pain or some baggage in my life to where I just can't move forward in life? Or perhaps Jesus would ask some of us to say, would you hold up to me what you, what you really value, what you think is of value? And would you submit that to me where I can speak truth into your life? You know, uh, the first Sunday of our series, we talked about King Saul and how he was dominated by fear and he sought the approval of men. And that really had uh, consequences for him. He lost his kingdom because of that. He did not pay attention to what was going on underneath the surface of his life. Last Sunday, we talked about David and how David actually did pay attention to what was going on in his life. He was confident in, who, in his identity and who he was in Christ. He paid attention. You know, there might be some of us who would say, you know what, I love God. But deep down in our lives, there are some areas where we are just immature about some things. You know, take a guy like Tom. I'm not talking about anyone who's listening, of course. This is just an illustration. But Tom had been a Christian for 31 years. He loved God, he went to church, he did all this Christian stuff. But one day his friend invites him to go, let's say fishing or hunting. But then at the last minute, his, his friend cancels on him. Tom then sits at home and he begins to stew and why his friend canceled on him. Why did he do this? You see, what you don't know about Tom's life is that he grew up in a home where uh, people always canceled on him, where he was abandoned time and time again, and he was raised in that environment. And so now every relationship that he encounters when he is canceled on, he doesn't know what to do. And instead of confronting those emotions in his life and perhaps doing the mature thing and talking to the individual, instead he distances himself from that friend. And then he moves on to another relationship and the same thing happens and again and again and he begins to get hurt. You know, the story that we're going to talk about this, this morning is the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, 25 through 37. And it's a really good example of some people who just did not take care of some things in their life. 
to where they uh, had this emotional baggage in their life. They said they loved God, but they really didn't put that love into action. I think it's also a really good example of a person who was broken and who had humility in their life, who had some deep conversations with the Lord and who did ask for healing in their life so that they could shine the love of God in their life. But before we really dig deep into this passage, I just want to ask you this question. How are you growing in your love of God and in your love of others? Because we can't separate the two. And the story that Jesus tells tells us just that. We can't separate the two. So how are you growing in your love of God and your love for others? Let me use this illustration. You know, babies, they obviously can't speak. You know, they cry to get what they want. And when mom and dad don't come, the baby cries even louder. You know, an adult who is an emotional infant does the same thing. <laughs> um, they treat others as objects just to get their needs met. They might treat others poorly if they don't get what they want. Uh, of course, that doesn't describe any of us who are listening probably. But now think of a child who is maybe, let's say, 10 years old. They obviously can speak. They can talk, but they're still dependent on a parent to help them meet their needs. Perhaps that child comes home from school because, and they come home mad. And they begin to get really upset and they begin to say, you know what, I want, I want to just get back at my friend. They begin to spread rumors about their friend. You know, an adult who is like an emotional child is not really all that different, is it, from that 10-year-old? An adult might, might act out of resentment. An adult might uh, lie. An adult might uh, distance themselves from that person. They don't have the ability to honestly talk about their feelings and emotions. So part of growing into a healthy, spiritual, emotional Christian is someone who has empathy for others, who can see another point of view, a person who's not easily offended and feels the need to get back, also a person who's able to speak truth without attacking another person. So where are you in that area? I mean, if you're like me, uh, that, that growth does not happen overnight. It's, it's a work of God to grow us into a healthy, spiritual, emotional follower of Jesus. That day that Jesus told their, this story in Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 25, tells us that there was a lawyer who asked a question. He said, Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And of course, the problem with that question right off the bat, I need to say, is that's the wrong question. Because there's nothing that you can do to inherit eternal life. It is the grace of God in your life. We don't earn it. We don't buy it. The Bible says, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. But he wants to know. And so Jesus answers the question. He says, well, what's written in the law? What's written in the Old Testament? And the guy says, well, love God and love neighbor. And Jesus says, yep, you got it right. Just go and do that. Well, still, he wants to figure this thing out. And he says, well, just who is my neighbor? I mean, how far do I have to take this love thing that you're talking about? And so Jesus then goes in to a story. In verse 31 and 32, he says, you know, there was this guy going down from Jerusalem to Jericho along this road. And this road, if some of you don't know, is a very dangerous road. I know it's windy here. <laughs> it's a very dangerous road. And there are some people along this road who um, like to hide out and rob people. And this is what Jesus is describing on this road. This robber comes, he robs this guy, he strips him of his clothes, he leaves them uh, half dead on the side of the road. We learn that in verses 31 and 32 that there was a priest and a Levite walking down the road. Now a priest and a Levite, they're very spiritual people. They're like pastors. Um, they're supposed to be holy. They're supposed to be preaching about the love 
of God. And they walk down this same road. They walk right past this guy, but they walk on the other side of the road. They don't call 911. Uh, they don't even go over to see what's going on with this man. Now, we don't know why they didn't stop. Jesus does not focus on that. But the point is, is that, that there was one man that did. And this one man took pity on this man. You know, in verse 33, I think we're challenged to ask this question or reflect on this. If I am growing into a spiritually, emotionally healthy follower of Jesus, then I will see the hurt and pain in other people's lives. Because in verse 33, it tells us that this Samaritan, this good Samaritan, <laughs> saw this man. He saw the man. He not only saw the man with his own eyes, but he went over and he began to engage this man. It says that he took pity or he had compassion on the man. This word compassion actually means like this gut level response. You know, after you've ate some bad pizza or something bad, you, your stomach might be upset and you feel this like thing in your gut. This is the kind of compassion that Jesus is talking about. It's the same kind of compassion Jesus had on people when he saw the multitudes or when he saw people who were harassed and helpless. He had compassion on him. That's the same kind of passion that this Samaritan had on this guy. And the shocking thing is, is that this man is a Samaritan, possibly helping out a Jew. Jews and Samaritans, they hated each other. There was bad blood between the two of them. They had different political views. They, they probably had a different view about COVID-19. They had different religious views. They were of a different race. They did not get along. And I'm sure as Jesus is telling this story to this lawyer and those who were standing around, this would have been shocking to them because the hero of the story is the Samaritan. I want you to think of a person who you just hate. Okay, not hate, but maybe dislike. Insert their name for Samaritan, for this Samaritan who helped, because that is the exact guy that showed compassion. It was shocking to them. So the question I ask myself today is, am I growing in my ability to see others and their pain and their hurt around me? And not just see, but am I growing in my ability to actually go and engage them in a conversation or help them in, in some kind of way? Or do I sit back and say, you know what? They're lying in this ditch. They probably did something to deserve it. I'm not going to help. If that's you, what is causing or what is rising up in your life causing you to think that way or say that? kind of thing. Max Licato in his book called Numbers reflects on the verse John 3.16. He says this about John 3.16. He says, it's a 26 word parade of hope, beginning with God, ending with life, and urging us to do the same. It's brief enough to write on a napkin or memorize in a moment yet solid enough to weather 2,000 years of storms and questions. If you know nothing of the Bible, start here, he says. If you know everything of the Bible, return here. We all need the reminder. The heart of the human problem is the heart of the human. And God's treatment plan is described or prescribed in John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and that whomever believes in me shall not perish but have eternal life. Friends, I want to call us as a church to the back to the basics of love. Jesus gave. Jesus loves. And he calls us to do the same even with people who we may not agree with. Jesus goes on to tell this story in verse 34, which 
causes me to question, am I growing into a spiritual and emotionally mature person to where I give my heart to, to others around me, even serving people who I may disagree with, even politically or even spiritually? Verse 34 says, he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil in wine and then he put the man on his own donkey and he took him to an inn and and took care of him friends jesus is telling this story two thousand years ago but we're reading it today we're hearing it today and i think we need to work to apply this to our lives today as i said before i think i've already said if there's ever a time that the world needs love the love of jesus it is now and this Samaritan took great risk. I mean, if you've ever helped someone who was bleeding, I mean, really badly bleeding, you take great risk. I mean, maybe this Samaritan might get infected. And maybe if he stops along the road for long enough, maybe he will end up like this person who is lying half dead on this road. But he opens up his heart. He takes com compassion. He is moved with pity. What a great example that Jesus is giving this man and giving us today of real love. You know, real love, the love of Jesus is one that seeks the highest good for someone else. Even when there's different political views, even when there's different religious views, even when you don't maybe approve of what someone is doing, Jesus calls us to love. Jesus is calling this lawyer to have compassion, to have this heart of pity for another person. Friends, this is a serious moment in our world today. I want to appeal to you on the basis of the love of Jesus. If we are growing spiritually into an emotionally mature adult, then we will seek the highest good for someone else. You know, one of the greatest verses, friends, is Romans 5, 8 in the Bible, that Jesus loved us while, while we were still yet sinners. Let that sink in this morning, that Jesus loved us while we were still yet sinners. And so if I'm growing spiritually and into this emotionally mature adult, then I am going to be willing at times to lay down my rights. Now, I'm not saying give up all of our rights, because I think in Scripture there's, there's, there's Scripture about uh, where people actually took up their rights. But what I am saying is, if my rights are getting in the way of my witness for Christ, I've got to lay those down. If my rights are getting in the way of someone else experiencing the love of Jesus in me, I've got to give those up. I'm reminded of my wife, uh, who does a very good job of that all the time uh, for me and for our family. But I'm reminded of a time of my wife when we lived in Malawi, Africa. There in the country of Malawi, um, is they're, they're very conservative and uh, it was frowned upon for women not to wear uh, pants and so for seven years my wife wore a skirt she did not wear pants because she knew that if she took up her right to do that it would hurt her witness for Jesus it would hurt others um, and their ability to experience the love of Christ for her and so she she gave that up. Paul reminds us, friends, in 1 Corinthians 13, 1, that we can speak truth, but if we don't do it with love, if we don't act with love, Eugene Peterson puts it like this in the message, we're a creaky, rusty gate. And so how are you growing in your ability spiritually and emotionally to give away this love of Jesus to someone that you might not agree with. And the last thing is this, in verses 
in verse 35, I know that when I am growing emotionally and spiritually, that I'm able to open up my hands to another person's needs. It says this in verse 35, the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. You know, this guy could have just simply felt sorry for this man along the road, but he understood. He thought about that this man was on a journey and now he's fallen into this mess and he needed help. And so he takes his own money, he takes his own time and he helps this person. You know, friends, I think that sometimes we measure our spirituality by how many Sundays we go to church or by how often we pray. But I'm not too sure God's all all that concerned about our church attendance. Yes, church attendance I think is important. I think it helps us grow as Christians. Um, But what he's more concerned about is if you're growing, if your heart is changing and becoming more like him. And I know it's pretty darn possible. I can be the first to tell you that if I do not grow emotionally as an adult, it is very hard to live out the love of Jesus for people in this world. So Jesus ends this story here, friends. He asks a question to the lawyer. He says, so which one of, uh, which one of these three do you think was a neighbor to this man who was on the side of the road? And the answer is quite obvious, actually. It's the one who had mercy on him, he said in verse 37. And Jesus simply tells the man, go and do likewise. But friends, how do we do that? How do we do that? Because I know it's so easy for me to say these words, but how do we practically do that? Friends, there is no other way to go and show mercy like this if we do not realize or we have never experienced the mercy of God in our own lives. If we don't understand that our condition before Christ, we were enemies with God, separated from God. But because God has redeemed our lives, we are brought back into this loving relationship with God. And if we do not understand the mercy that God has shown us, we'll never be able to experience that same mercy to others. Friends, loving God and loving others is connected to a healthy uh, relationship with God. And that doesn't happen overnight. It, it, it didn't happen, obviously, for these priests and Levites. They're, they're, they'll, they're still working on it in their lives. And I love the scripture in the Bible that says, He who began a good work is faithful to complete it. You know, friends, I know that for many of us, uh, we are, are, are longing to follow Jesus. But I know there are areas in our lives where God would just simply say, Hey, grow up. <laughs> grow up. And here's the thing. Jesus loves us so much that he wants to fill us. Those cracks in our lives, those things in our lives where we uh, give a bad witness or a bad testimony. Jesus wants to fill those lives and come and make us new. You know, friends, I know that there's some watching today who have never experienced the love of Christ. Jesus loves you so much. And while you were still sinners, still a mess. Jesus came down from heaven and walked among us and showed us how to live and gives people a new purpose, forgives people of their sins and gives us new life. Would you accept him today? Would you be so bold and so courageous to say, you know what, there are some things in my life. There is some emotional uh, pain, some resentment, some baggage in my life that is destroying relationships around me. And would you be bold, be so bold today to say yes to Jesus? There's a button right now that's come on the screen if you're watching through our website. There's a connect with us card on our Facebook page. If you'd click that and just say, yeah, I want, I want to have some help in, in following these next steps with Jesus. 
Friends, I want to leave you with this scripture today from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. It says this, As God's own, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, and patience, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, and crown all these things with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Friends, what the world needs now is love. Go and show mercy like Jesus said. Have a great Sunday. I love you, church.